And now it's just not something I'm willing to do. What? Geralt, what are you saying? Your plan, pretty damn risky. And I've got somebody to live for. I've got Siri to find. Siri's not the whole damn world. Oh! Ah! 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 No, 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 my leg! So, I just want to say that I am very excited to finally show you guys this video. A lot went into it, and I hope you like how it turned out. I also apologize that it took so long, it's been almost two weeks since my last upload, I know. But I'm doing my best, I don't want to rush any of the editing just to get a video done faster. Anyway, this video will deal with a couple of very specific quest failures early in the game, and how those failures later affect the Act 3 assassination quest, Reason of State. Those early game failures end up changing Reason of State in ways that were quite unlike anything I'd ever seen before in my Witcher game experimenting. And with that said, for the rest of this video to make any sense at all, I first need to point out that according to the Witcher wiki and everything everywhere online, in order for you to be given the quest Reason of State in Act 3, you must complete, aka you can't fail, three separate quests in Act 1. Those being Redania's Most Wanted, An Eye for an Eye, and A Deadly Plot. I am here to tell you that this is not correct, and I want to point out that it is truly insane how many articles and websites are out there that all say the same exact wrong thing, and by how many articles and websites, I mean literally all of them, not a single one anywhere has this right. As I found out in my experimenting, the only one of those three quests you actually have to complete is a deadly plot, which is the one where Taller is rescued. Both of the others you can let fail and still participate in Reason of State, although as I'll be explaining, you do have to fail them in very specific ways that end up changing a fair amount of the dialogue during the assassination. Let's begin with Redania's Most Wanted. This is the quest where Radovid orders Geralt to find Philippa Eilhart. You search her hideout, get your hands on a crystal that contains some information, and then once you leave the hideout after you've dealt with the Witch Hunters, in order to complete the quest you must speak to Radovid. In that conversation, you don't have to give him the crystal, of course, you can lie to him, or you might have even given the crystals to the Witch Hunters earlier, but no matter what, you have to meet with him in order to complete the quest. However, if your only concern is taking part in the Radovid assassination, you can just stop the quest before completing it. After you leave Philippa's hideout, you can ignore the last objective, and let the entire quest fail when you begin the Isle of Mists, which is the quest where you finally find Ciri. A lot of secondary quests fail here. The important thing is that you'll still be good to go for the assassination later, albeit with some changed dialogue that we'll get to. Now, onto the quest in Eye for an Eye. This one involves Geralt's good old pal Roach asking him for help concerning his second-in-command Vess, a character that Geralt has a fair amount of history with. Another prisoner killed while trying to escape. Yes, sir. Vess has rushed off to a nearby village to ambush some Nilfgaardians despite Roach forbidding her from doing so, and Roach wants Geralt's help to track her down. If you agree, you meet him underneath the hanged man's tree, but no matter what you do, you are too late to stop her from attacking. You run down to the village, kill some Nilfgaardians with Vess and Roach, either spare or kill a surviving enemy soldier, and that's it for the quest. It's very, very short. Now, I imagine most of you know this, but I need to point out that it is possible for Vess to die here. It's also worth mentioning that unless your game glitches or something, you do have to try extremely hard in order for her to be killed. In fact, in the gameplay I'm showing you right now, I was actually doing a test where I just didn't help at all. I never took a single swing at the enemies, and she still didn't die. However, if you do let it happen and she is killed here, Roach will be mad and the quest will outright fail and never complete. Where the bloody hell did he go? Berry picking? Roach, I... I've no desire to talk to you, Geralt. Goodbye. By the way, I want to point out something really awesome I found with this quest that took me by surprise. If you meet up with Roach to help but then just ditch him immediately when you're supposed to run down to the village, there's actually a unique and kind of brutal cutscene that takes place if, after some time passes, you try to visit Roach again back at the Temerian hideout. You're late. Very. Vess is dead and buried. Back to the topic at hand though, according to everywhere on the internet, an eye for an eye cannot fail in order for you to be given the quest Reason of State way later in Act 3, which both Roach and Vess are heavily involved in. As you can probably tell by the direction this video is headed, I really questioned this and wanted to test it. I knew for a fact that if you never met Roach at the tree to begin with, you wouldn't get the quest, but 
I was having a hard time believing the game would still lock you out of the entire assassination plot just because you let Vest die. Although I found multiple reddit posts asking the same question I was, and the top comments on all of them said nope, Vest has to live if you want to do Reason of State. Although to be fair, most of them were probably just citing the wiki or some article and didn't really question it further. As I mentioned, Vess is a big part of Reason of Stay, so her being dead is kind of a big deal, and at the time, I figured it was, at the very least, worth testing to see if maybe these articles were mistaken. So during one of my run-throughs, because I had to try a few different ways of failing those quests before it actually worked, I progressed all the way through the save where I let both Eye for an Eye and Redania's Most Wanted fail in the ways I've described, and I reached the point where you are usually given the assassination quest. If you don't remember, assuming you've done what's required, Reason of State will be given to you during Blindingly Obvious, which is the quest where you and Triss track down Philippa at Dijkstra's bathhouse. At the end of the quest, you have to make a decision. Bribe Dijkstra with information, or as the game describes it, shove Dijkstra aside, forcefully. Sorry, can't let that happen. No! Oh! Ah! 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 No, 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 my leg! Call me crazy, but I've always felt like there is quite the difference between shoving someone forcefully and brutally beating them, snapping their only good leg like a twig, and potentially crippling them for life, but hey, that's just me, I don't have a ton of experience doing those things, I generally try to avoid crippling people. Anyway, if you want to be given the assassination quest, you have to choose the bribe option here, after which Dijkstra will invite you to meet with him and the other co-conspirators elsewhere in Novigrad. And yeah, this was the moment of truth for me in my testing. At that point, I'd already tried a few different ways of failing the various quests without it working, so honestly, I was about to give up, but as I've already kind of spoiled because I'm not gonna hang it over your head, sure enough, when I failed the two quests in the ways I described, I was given reason of state even though I had purposely failed two of the three prerequisite quests I apparently was required to complete. And let me show you what this changes because, oh boy. So I get to the secret meeting with Roach, Toller, and Dijkstra. Vess is never at this meeting no matter what, so nothing out of the ordinary yet. The changes begin when Dijkstra asks Geralt if his spies were correct, and that Radovid had hired Geralt to hunt Philippa down. In a normal save where you've completed Redania's Most Wanted, as literally every tutorial in existence says you must, Geralt will say this. Geralt, do I recall correctly that Radovid's hired you to find Philippa? Mm-hmm. Only thing I've found is her hideout. However, in my game, where I let the quest fail and refuse to have the conversation with Radovid at all, I had different dialogue here, where Geralt instead says this. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't interested. What's your point? At the time of me doing this testing, this quote made me wonder. Maybe you don't even have to find her hideout to begin with, and you don't even have to touch Redania's Most Wanted other than being given the quest. I wanted to be thorough, so as is the nature of this type of video, I had to do a partial run-through of the game where I just skipped all of Redania's Most Wanted. I got the quest from Radovid, but never went to her hideout, but when I did that, I wasn't given Reason of State, so... This dialogue change apparently exists just for the scenario where you do all of Redania's Most Wanted, except for the very last conversation where you speak to Radovid again, which is pretty cool. Moving on though, I want to point out something extremely weird I noticed while exploring all dialogue options. During this conversation with Taller, Dijkstra, and Roach, you have multiple chances to back out of the assassination. The first opportunity for this isn't particularly interesting, but during your second chance to bail, Geralt says something really weird. Your plan, pretty damn risky. And I've got somebody to live for. I've got Siri to find. Siri's not the whole damn world. Speak for yourself. He says, I've got Siri to find. Um, I probably don't need to tell you guys this, but Reason of State can only take place in Act 3. At this point in the story, you've long since found Ciri. In my game, she was just chilling with everyone else at Dandelion's Inn. I thought this quote was worth pointing out because it's very weird, and in my opinion, it's just further evidence that Reason of State was probably a much different quest at one point. This quote must have slipped through the cracks, and overall, Reason of State just feels like a quest that was changed a lot during development. I could probably make an entire video just talking about the ending of the quest alone, and my thoughts on how that plays out. Anyway, that's not the point of this video, let's move on through the conversation, where we get our first piece of evidence that the quest has indeed taken into account that Vess is dead, and this is very important for future reference. Near the end of this first conversation, Roach will usually say this when discussing how they plan to ambush Radovid. I'll divide my men, post half on one end, other half on the other, by the gate. And in the middle, Vess, with a well-oiled crossbow. In my game though, since I had failed the quest and allowed Vess to die, Roach instead said this. 
and in the middle, someone with a well-oiled crossbow. I want to stress, it's very important that you keep in mind what I just showed you, and you'll see in a minute why that is. Usually I wouldn't show a clip where they literally just replaced one word, I'd probably just make a reference to it, but this one is especially important, so just trust me. So, once the first conversation is over, you're sent to Radovid's ship under the pretense of knowing Philippa Eilhart's location, and Philippa is a character who Radovid has some, uh, beef with. Look me in the eye and repent. Submit. As you wish. Torturer, put out those vile eyes. Of course, your true goal is to lure Radovid into an ambush, but we won't be filling him in on that little detail. Now here we have a couple of dialogue changes if you found Philippa's hideout, but then failed where Dany is most wanted. Under normal circumstances where you completed the quest, Geralt will say this when you approach his ship. Witcher Geralt, what do you want? An audience. Got new information about Philippa Eilhart. However, if you found the hideout but then let the quest fail, Geralt will instead say this because this would be your first time returning to the ship in this specific scenario. An audience. Managed to learn something about Philippa Eilhart. I'll need your weapons. Now follow me. A similar thing happens when you speak to Radovid himself. Usually when you show up, he'll comment on your last meeting, however that went. I hope you brought something better than magic crystals this time. But if you failed the quest, Radovid will instead comment on how long it took you to show back up. Hmm. You took your time. What is it? So, now we can finally get to my favorite part of all of this. During the conversation on the boat, you lie to Radovid and lure him out to the streets of Novigrad at night for the ambush. Radovid will set his men on you before he even realizes he's walked into a trap, and a fight ensues with Roach coming to the rescue, which to be fair is just common practice for Vernon Roach. Soon after this is where Vess would usually come into play, so I was getting kind of excited to see how her absence would be accounted for, because keep in mind, for me this wasn't a quick video with near instant gratification, it was multiple run-throughs of a huge portion of the game, this specific save being the first one where I was actually given reason of state while experimenting with failing those earlier quests in different ways. I need to point out again that my game and this quest specifically just minutes before had already acknowledged that Vess was out of the picture via some changed dialogue, so imagine my surprise when who shows up to the fight but Vess. Yes, Vess who was killed, whose glossary entry acknowledges her death, and my game had addressed as being dead several times throughout my save, such as when I tried asking Roach to help me at Kaer Morin, is now somehow running around during the assassination, and I'm pretty sure this is where my brain just short-circuited for a minute, and the thing is, it gets a lot weirder. Quite honestly, in all of my Witcher 2 and Witcher 3 testing, I have never seen anything quite like what I'm about to show you, and you might be thinking to yourself right now, Oh, I guess the devs just forgot to account for her being dead here. This is a really unlikely scenario, and this is just an unfortunate oversight that slipped through the cracks, which you would be right to an extent, but the craziest part of all of this is, the rest of the quest continues to acknowledge that she is dead, despite her being present in all of the gameplay and most of the cutscenes. All of her lines from this point forward, because she has several, have been removed and in most cases replaced with new quotes from Geralt, Roach, and Toller. Yet at the same time, Vess is present in all of the gameplay and most of the cutscenes, yet she just doesn't talk where she usually would. It's truly bizarre. The devs accounted for her death with a bunch of new quotes, but somehow forgot to remove her from the quest itself. These new lines begin directly after Radovid has been killed. Usually, when Vess is supposed to be alive, this conversation between Geralt and Roach plays out in this way. Eve's dropped on us, back at the warehouse. What? And you didn't think it worth mentioning? Lads, the time to discuss this is later. Radovid is dead. It matters not by whose hand. Mission accomplished. Now let's get the hell away. Place will be thick with Redanians in minutes. Let's go. In my game though, where Vess was dead yet still somehow present, new dialogue from Geralt has replaced all of her lines. Eve's dropped on us, back at the warehouse. What? And you didn't think it worth mentioning? We can discuss this later. Radovid's dead. Doesn't matter who killed him. Now let's get the hell out of here. Place will be overrun by Redanians in minutes. Next, you head to the post-assassination meeting spot, which is Madame Marina's theater, and Vess is still present despite her being dead and her dialogue having been replaced in the previous cutscene, and this dialogue replacement continues at the theater. Usually, when Roach toasts Tamaria, things play out like this. The North. Tamaria. 
Temeria! Bloody Temeria! In my Vess is dead gameplay though, she has been excluded from the toast, so they clearly knew to remove her, yet something just went wrong. The North. Temeria. Bloody Temeria! Similarly, towards the end of the conversation, when Dijkstra comes out quoting Macbeth, in a more normal game where Vess is meant to be alive, she will ask what he's talking about. That but this blow might be the be-all and end-all here. What's that? But in my Vess is dead playthrough, despite her being right there in the background of the cutscene, Roach replaces her line here. That but this blow might be the be-all and end-all here. Meaning? Another instance of this same thing happening is after the conflict is over. If you side with Roach and kill Dijkstra, after the fight, Vess will say this. That was close. Very close. It's hardly over. Yet in my Vess is dead playthrough, despite her being clearly visible in the cutscene, Toller has absorbed her line here. Bloody hell! Bugger me sideways! That was fucking close. It's hardly over. I am going to admit that in the moment I just found all of this funny because it was so unexpected, but I don't really understand how this happens. I mean, they did all of the heavy lifting by replacing her voice lines, but somehow forgot to actually remove her from the mission. Maybe someone at CDPR will see this video and the right people can fix this in the Enhanced Edition because I'd certainly love to see this working as intended. So that is everything. If you do enjoy this type of Witcher content and could leave a like, I'd certainly appreciate it. It really helps get these videos out there as do your comments, which I seriously love reading. Also, if you're liking what I'm doing on the channel, please feel free to subscribe, and you can also turn on notifications if you want to know exactly when I post, because I warn you, my upload schedule will be a little sporadic, because I'm basically uploading these videos as I get them done. I probably put 30 to 40 hours into each one, as I'm sure you can imagine. Anyway, it's wild to me that this is my fifth video on the channel in two months, and we're already past 15,000 subscribers. My goal is to get to 20k before Christmas, but We'll see if we make it. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell, Kingslayers.